the new chair of BCDC, who was here, Zach Wasserman. And we're honored to have Zach. He's going to come up and give perspective of the historic history of BCDC, Bay Planning, and what the future holds for both. Zach?
most, most of you had the closest experience with it, um, and indeed part of the uh, founding reasons for this organization. Uh, my impression is that staff and the commission have increasingly tried to make the regulatory process a cooperative one and a partner process. And I intend to continue that effort. But I actually think, going forward, how we will continue the regulatory responsibilities. I think the most important role that the BCDC will have will be the planning role. I have heard from some critics, some in this room, uh, that a regulatory agency uh, is not a good planning agency. I reject that criticism. Glad of that. Counties, cities, other agencies, constantly do both. And I think it can be done very well. And I know that BC is. We, the larger community concerned for the Bay, have the opportunity over the next several years to decide what we really want the Bay to become. So I'm going to go through major changes in the short term. Um, nonetheless, there are some significant opportunities about what we want the Bay to look like, how we continue to have access to it, <coughs> how we want it to function, and how it contributes to the economy and quality of life. All of those of us who are privileged to live in the Bay Area. As you know, BCDC <coughs> was created by the efforts of three extraordinary women, Kay Kerr, Sylvia McLaughlin, and Esther Gould, who had a vision and a drive serve the Bay from development proposals and a willingness to ignore the common wisdom that they had no chance of doing so. And that effort was not simply for developers. Keep in mind that it was the city of Berkeley that had major plans for film that would have significantly reduced the size of the Bay and the shore around the Bay. Today, we face a different challenge. We're faced with the effects of climate change that may well significantly increase the size of the bay, not necessarily in ways that we want. We are indeed cursed to live in interesting times. Hopefully, we can figure out how to enjoy and benefit from that curse, and I think we can. As we face the challenges of rising sea levels, we need always to think about the balance of these pieces job. Crowds and words, or words. The most important word is and. The balance between conservation and development. This will be increasingly true and increasingly challenging as we attempt to address rising sea levels. As John pointed out, the conservative but by no means worst case prediction is that by the end of the century, sea level this area will rise 55 inches. And certainly the loss of ice um, cause, and the most recent report indicating by indeed warming of the seas as well as the warming of the air, so they get from both sides underneath and above, indicates that we are very likely to face that problem. That will have a very major impact on our built environment. Those of us in this room who are really smart, really want to do well, they take a little bit of time. Don't think high tech. Think Wellingtons, rubber boots, because you'll need them for being right here. What we can do and what we should do, including consideration of unintended consequences, and how we're going to pay for what we do about rising the sea level, deserves our major attention campaign over the next five and ten years. The end of this century seems very far away, but our preparation for what is likely to happen, but at some level is certain to happen, needs our attention in a reasonable time frame, needs our attention now. Our airports, our ports, our waterfront cities and amenities, our marshes, our wetlands, our power plants and our sewer treatment plants all require this attention. Many of the discussions and 
policies and regulations regarding climate change focus on the effort to reduce greenhouse gas and other environmental complications. And we need to continue those discussions and those regulations and those efforts. There's no question about that. But we also need to focus on what adaptive technologies we can create that will protect the built environment where we live and work and how we travel. And that's a somewhat new subject. BCDC has actually undertaken a number of efforts in this regard, but I'm not sure we have publicized that enough. In 2009, BCDC held an open international design competition for ideas responding to sea level rise and San Francisco Bay. The responses were created out of the box, and if you haven't looked at them, the opportunity to do so, I encourage you to go to the BCDC website look at Rising Tides Design Competition. We need a big screen. Um, but it's worth looking at and <coughs> running through. Many of them are crazy. No. But we probably need crazy approaches to truly address the challenges of rising sea level. Currently, ECDC is undertaking an art project adapting to rising tides. The art project is focused on the East Bay, in <coughs> partnership with NOAA and others. It's focused on the shoreline from Emeryville to Union City and brings community officials and stakeholders together to collectively gain a better understanding of how sea level rise and climate change impacts will affect the Bay Area's ecosystems, infrastructure, and economy. Additionally, art will identify strategies for community-based adaptation planning to address these challenges and develop a process we're going to hear more about art in the coming months. And it's not simply a study. It is looking at ways to actually implement methods that can help protect that shore. We're also working with the Dutch government to take advantage of Netherlands' centuries of experience in protecting low-lying areas from flooding. DCDC entered into a unique partnership with the Dutch in 2008. It's being renewed. Experts from the Netherlands work with BCDC staff <coughs> on planning for adaptation sea level rise. It's funded by the Dutch government. The respective situation in the Netherlands and the Bay Area are being prepared for drafts. We have a slight hiccup at this very moment uh, because of yesterday's collapse of the Dutch government related to the European economic situation. Uh, and while this does illustrate our global interdependence uh, in economic and environmental situations, even for local planning. Our need to survive and the benefits of regional, national, and international cooperation will transcend these short-term crises. One of the opportunities and challenges that we face, as you know, is to find the successor to Will Travels. As you heard from John, as many of you know, this is not We know that we'll have some very good internal candidates for these things, but we want as broad and a diverse candidate pool as possible. So, if any of you know anyone who might be interested and would be good, encourage them to apply. Information about what we're looking for and the process is on the BCDC website. So what else does the future hold? A lot of wonderful things. We know that one of them is the truly exciting international sailing race, the America's Cup, and some of the issues we're, we've been dealing with, um, fortunately not terribly controversial, uh, as it has worked out, for better or worse, um, is improvements to the peers to deal with the America's Cup race. Reading yesterday's Wall Street, Wall Street Journal story about renting apartment and houses in San Francisco to view the race at truly outrageous rates inspired me to think and talk to staff about what BCDC might be able to do to regulate, to create some spaces that we could rent and get into. <laughs> Probably. On a longer term basis and a more serious way. We look forward to regional cooperation, significantly led by the Joint Policy Committee. As many of you know, we may plan a bit. There was a call for the Joint Policy Committee, that is the regional uh, 
coordinating a group consisting of the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, the Area Association of Area Governments, the uh, Bay Area Air District, and DCDC. To undertake the implementation of next steps, <coughs> the adaptation uh, for sea level rise, the Joint Policy Committee is considering doing that. It's not clear they will accept the cost of that. Thank you. The, uh, but regardless of whether they do or not, they will have value to that. And regardless of whether they accept that or not, BCDC will continue to have a significant role in doing that. But it's not just the Joint Policy Committee. We are reaching out to many other players, our universities, the national labs, foundations, both local and national, that are concerned with climate change, insurance and reinsurance companies, which are the most concerned with this, as well as major corporations that are gradually recognizing that rising sea level has as much impact on them as global competition. And we can continue to explore crazy ideas that may well save us from catastrophic consequences our own effect on air and sea. I feel very honored to serve as BCDC chair in these challenging times. And I know that I and our commission can only succeed with the support of those in this room for a whole variety of efforts, as well as many others who recognize how very important San Francisco Bay is to the current and future quality of our personal and economic lives. I look forward to a rigorous dialogue with you and our constructive efforts together to conserve and develop our bed. If not us, who? If not now, 